Hello and welcome to Bottoms Down, Chair Yoga for Everyone. I'm Carol. I'm so glad you joined us today. So check out the sections on the Bottoms Down YouTube channel homepage. It make it easier to find classes by length of time or by purpose or by body area. And if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button. It's free and we'd love to hear from you. So leave me a comment. I've been getting more and more comments, which I love. I respond to all of them and I incorporate those suggestions as best I can. Now in today's practice, we'll explore poses for back pain. Yoga poses can help increase the strength in those specific muscles and muscle groups, which can help you reduce back pain and maintain a healthy spine. So you'll need a chair today and a yoga block. Now, if you don't have a yoga block, you can substitute a large book or you can just do the class without it. All right, let's go ahead and move forward in our chair and take just a moment to ground our feet to the earth. So thinking about having those four pressure points of both feet equally weighted on the earth, on the floor. And then the next thing we're going to do is think about those sits bones. So we want to be equally weighted on the chair so you're not leaning one way or the other. Let's go ahead and connect to that heart center. Try to let go of everything outside of the room. Close your eyes. Just connect to that breath. Now let's go ahead and deepen that breath. Inhale a little more deeply and exhale a little more completely. Just one more breath. Go ahead and bring your hands to your heart and set your intentions for today's practice. Bring your hands down to your thighs and open your eyes. We're going to take our shoulders and we're just going to shrug them up into our ears. Then what I want you to do is let gravity work here and just let them fall. If you bring your hands down by your side, gravity may give you even a little bit more, right? And let them fall. Let's do that again. It should feel good. <laughs> it feels good to me. Let's do one more. And just let them fall. Excellent. All right. We're going to take our right ear and we're going to let it just fall to that right shoulder. Now you're going to take your right hand and you're just going to lay it lightly on top of the head. Okay. Just, you're not pulling or tugging or anything. You're just letting that hand rest on the head. Now the other hand you're going to extend out flexing the wrist, pushing through the palm towards the wall beside you. Nice little neck stretch there. Okay, let's bring this hand down first. Take the hand off of the head and up we go. Wow, how does that feel? Okay, let's do the other side. Ha! Ah, so we're going to let that ear fall down towards the shoulder first. And then we're going to reach up with that hand and just lay it lightly on the head. Opposite arm is going to extend, flexing the wrist, pushing the palm into the side, towards that wall beside you. One more breath here. Let's bring that hand down first. Take the hand off of the head and lift that head up. Nice. How does that feel? All right, excellent. So we're going to move into a cat pose and a cow pose. So we're going to bring our hands to heart first, and we're going to lift up through the throat, okay? So thinking about crown of the head up, kind of opening up into the throat, just a little bit though, right? So there's a beautiful version of a cow pose. All right, now we're going to move into a cat pose. So we're going to round our spine, Pull your belly button in, place your hands on the thighs, elbows wide, and just tuck your chin and roll down. All right, now we're going to lift that heart back up, bring those hands back, 
to your heart, lift, open up through the throat, crown of the head lifts, gaze lifts up just a little bit. And then let's round back down into that cat pose again. We're going to do that two more times. Inhale as you bring your hands to heart, lifting up through the crown of the head, looking up slightly. Exhale as you round down into your cat pose. Last time, inhale, extending through the spine, lifting up, head towards the ceiling, gazes up just a slight bit. Exhale, round it down one final time, and release. Let's grab a sip of water. Our next pose is called Camel Pose, and we're going to move between a Camel Pose and a Seated Child's Pose. I'm going to turn to the side so you can see me better, but I want you to stay facing me. So for our Camel Pose, we're going to take the palms of our hands and we're going to place them on each side of the spine, right in the small of the back. Okay. So you don't want a hand on the spine. You want it on each side of the spine. Now, if having the palms of your hands begins to be uncomfortable, you can always switch to the fist, okay? So that's always an option. If you're with me, what I'm going to do now is with my palms, all I'm going to do is I'm going to push my hips forward. And you see what's happening? It's just kind of creating a little back bend there, a tiny little back bend. It's not much, but it's a good stretch for that back. One more breath here. Now, we're going to counter that with a child's pose, okay? So as I come forward, I'm going to pull my belly button in. Now, I'm just going to let my hands fall between my legs, palms facing down, and just kind of let your head hang out. One more breath. All right, we're going to do that exact same thing one more time. Palms on each side of the, of the spine, pushing forward, lifting through the chest just a little bit, feeling that little tiny back bend, camel pose. One more breath, and then go ahead and let your hands just fall between your legs. Let your head fall into your child's pose. And up we go. Okay, that's great. Now, if you want a little bit more, what we're going to do, I'm going to actually turn and face you now. I think you, you kind of got the idea of what I'm doing because I really don't want to be turning my head. Mm -hmm. So here we go. We're going to take our palms and we're going to place them in the small of our back again. All right. Now, I'm going to push forward just like I did. This time, I'm going to look up. All right. So I'm not looking up too high but just a little bit, kind of maybe where the ceiling and the wall meet, so I'm creating a little more back bend there. One more breath, pull your belly button in, and let's go all the way down into that child's pose. Okay, let's do that one final time. Here we go. Push forward with those hips. Squeeze your shoulder blades behind you. Maybe you look up even higher, but don't release the neck, okay? So we're looking up, but we still have that neck engaged. I don't know about you, but that just feels so good to me. One more breath here, pull the belly in, and let's go back into that seated child's pose. So all I'm doing is my hands are just kind of hanging out between my legs, and maybe they come a little further down if that feels okay. You're tucking your chin and you're just letting yourself hang out. Okay, let's go ahead and roll up. Ah, <sighs> and get ready for our next move. So our next pose is straddle forward fold, and we're going to add the block. So if you would grab your block, and again, if you don't have the block, don't worry. I'll show you how to do it just using your legs. But we're going to heel, toe, heel, toe, our feet pretty wide, okay? So pretty wide here. Let's place the block on the floor between your legs in that number three position. So we've got number three, number two, I'm sorry, number three, number two, 
and number one position. So we want it in that tallest position. All right, so extend through the spine nice and long first. Have your hands on those thighs to begin with. Begin to let your heart fall forward, keeping the back flat to begin with, okay? You've got your hands on those thighs for support. One more breath, tuck your chin and roll it up super slow and release, okay? So the next version, we're gonna take our hands and we're gonna put it on the block or you're gonna walk your hands down your legs. Here we go, lengthen through the spine, belly tight, let your heart fall forward, place your hands on the block and let that heart sink just a little bit deeper. Let's keep the back flat for right now. One more breath, tuck the chin and we're gonna roll it up. Okay, so you should be feeling the inner thigh stretching, right? And the back is getting a nice lengthening and work, working those muscles. Okay, are we ready? Let's do that again. Let's go ahead and move our block to the number two position. Or if you're using your legs, you're gonna be moving down your shins. Here we go, extend through the spine, let the heart fall forward, place the hands on the block or your shins, let the heart fall a little bit further. Again, keep the back flat. We're still not tucking the chin yet. Keeping that back flat, trying to lengthen through the crown of the head towards the wall in front of you. One more breath, tuck the chin, and we're gonna roll that up. Here we go. Keep that block flat now, lengthen through the spine, let that heart fall forward, place the hands on that block. Now listen, this time, if you are got your hands on your ankles, if you're using your body, you've got your hands on your block in that number one position, let your heart fall, tuck the chin. One more breath here, and we're gonna roll it up nice and slow. Okay. So the final version, if you want, we're gonna remove the block and we're gonna just use the floor, okay? Now, use the block if you want to, hang on to those ankles if you want to. If you're with me, extend the spine long, belly tight. We're gonna let our heart fall forward, all right? My hands are on the floor and let's go ahead and tuck that chin just a little bit. See if you can let that heart fall any, any more. All right, listen. Lift your heart nice, just a little bit, and I want you to walk your hands to your right foot. Now, as you walk your hands to the right, you should feel a nice stretch in the side waist. Keep this leg, this foot, this hip down, the opposite side, right? It will kind of want to hike up, but I don't want you to let it. Lengthen through the spine, walk your hands back center, let your heart fall. Lengthen through the spine, walk your hands to the other side, let your heart fall, keep that opposite side down, lift your heart, walk back center. Okay, now listen, this one, only do it if it feels good to you, it's called ragdoll. What I'm going to do, if you want to peek real quick, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hands off of the floor and I'm going to grab my elbows and there is an amazing stretch for the back. Nod your head yes, shake your head no, nod your head yes, go ahead and drop your hands to the floor, begin to roll yourself up, take your hands to your thighs, give yourself some support, and finish rolling all the way up to seated position. How did that feel? <laughs> He'll toe those feet back together. That was a pretty intense one, wasn't it? Yeah, I felt it too. So the next thing is not nearly as intense, but it feels really, really good. Okay, so it's called staff pose. And the first thing I want you to think about is you're grounding your sits bones to the chair. So thinking about having those pointy sits bones that we sit on firmly grounded to the chair. Your feet are grounded as well. Place your hands right under your armpits and I want you to lift up. So I'm lifting through the chest, the crown of the head is towards the ceiling, the belly button is tight. 
lift up as high as you can, then place your fingertips on the chair, but maintain that lifted sternum, right? Maintain that lifted sternum, that lifted chest. Don't let it sink down. Work it, work it, work it, and release. Let's do that again. Ground, 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 sits bones, feet, put your fingertips or your thumbs right under the armpits. Lift up first. Feel that lengthening. Feel that lengthening up through the spine, right? Crown of the head's trying to touch the ceiling, but I'm grounded through my sits bones. Now release that. Place those fingers on the chair. Lift up. One more breath and release. It's amazing, isn't it? How much you can, how much lengthening you can get when you really kind of focus on it. Yeah, excellent, excellent work. So we're gonna extend our mountain up to the ceiling. Shoulders are gonna stay down. Put those palms together, interlace your fingers, point your fingers to the ceiling, and we're gonna lean our mountain. We're going to come back up and we're going to lean our mountain the other way. And we're going to come up and we're going to lean our mountain again. Turn and look up at the ceiling. Release that. Come back center and let's do that the other side. Lean that mountain, lengthening through turn and look up at the ceiling take the twist out back up to the ceiling bring your hands down by your side and let's grab a sip of water we're going to come to standing on the right side of our chair So in this series, this is called a bent knee forward fold series. And the idea here is that we're gonna keep those knees bent pretty generously throughout the entire thing and really try to focus in on stretching into the back. Now we're gonna start just using our chair, but then if you want to add on, then we'll grab our block and we'll have our hands on that block. So it's just gonna give us a little additional uh, sinking of that upper body, only if you want, right? You can always just use your chair. Okay, so I think we wanna be, um, you know, a good step away from the chair so that you've got a little bit of space. And then uh, again, the whole series is bent knee. So we wanna just take the hamstrings totally out of the whole equation. So keep those knees as bent as you want to um, for this series. So we're gonna hinge forward first, okay? belly tight. We're just simply going to place our hands into the chair and then we're going to let that heart continue to fall forward. So for me personally, I can actually put my forehead into the seat of the chair and it feels comfortable for me. So that's an idea. If that doesn't feel good for you, you're just going to be hanging out here. The whole idea is I want you to be feeling a nice stretch into the back, okay? So I'm going to come on down and I'm going to put my forehead on the chair. Again, knees are bent. The idea is to feel the stretch in the back. We just have one more breath here. Now, this is important. Pull your abdominals in super tight. Keep those knees bent and roll up nice and slow into a standing position and release. Okay, so checking in How's that feel, right? Can you, is that good for you or can you go any deeper, right? So the idea is if we can sink a little bit deeper, let's do so. So what I'm personally going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and grab my block and I'm gonna set it here, okay? I'm still on the right side of my chair, so if I need to grab my chair, I can. I'm gonna bend my knees generously. I'm gonna hinge forward, begin to roll down and then I'm going to put my hands on the block. And I'm going to let my head fall. And there I am in a 
bent knee forward fold. So you're hanging out here, you're breathing, your hands are on the block, your hands are on the seat of the chair, your hands might even be on the floor. It's okay. Any version is fine. Make sure those knees are bent. I want you to feel this stretch in the back. Do you feel it? With your head down, we've got an inversion happening here. The blood is running to your head, so we're going to have to be super careful when we come up to standing. All right, are we ready? Knees are bent. You're going to begin to roll up. Hold on to that chair. That's fine, right? Walk yourself back up into a standing position. Okay, go ahead and lift the head. Take a moment here and let the blood recalibrate a little bit. Settle back down. Because we're going to do that one more time. Now, I'm going to show you what we're going to add on. It's called Ragdoll. And as we are in our inversion, in, with our head down in our forward fold, we're going to reach over and grab those elbows, okay? Now, if that doesn't feel good to you and you want to keep your hands on the floor or on the chair or on the block, that's fine. Try to let the weight of the head help you in this stretch, okay? We're going to do one final one. Here we go. Hinge forward, belly tight. Hands are going to be on the chair. Hands are going to be on the block. Maybe hands are going to be on the floor. Let that head fall. Bent knee forward fold. If you feel okay, you're going to reach up and grab your elbows and let the upper body hang out here in ragdoll. Go ahead and nod your head yes. Shake your head no. Nod your head yes. Hang out here for just a couple more breaths. Is your head falling? Are you letting the weight of the head help you stretch into the back? One more breath. Drop the hands. Bend the knees substantially. Roll up slowly. Grab that chair. Hang onto the chair. Come all the way up to a standing position. Take just a moment. Kind of let the blood settle back in. And let's have a seat. And grab a sip of water. We're going to come to standing on the right side of our chair. And let's face our chair. And we're going to take our leg, the leg that's next to the back of the chair, and we're going to set that foot under it so that when we bend our knee, our knee or shin touches the chair. Okay. Now, with this other leg, you're going to take a step back, and that back foot is at a 45 degree angle. Okay. Bend your front knee. I need to move up just a little bit. Bend that front knee, and hips face forward. Okay. Forward meaning over the seat of the chair. So those hips tend to kind of want to be at more of a diagonal. And if you need a little more grace, just heel toe that foot, that front foot out just a little bit. And that may let those hips come around a little bit more. Okay? You can hang on to that chair. That's fine. All right. So we're going to move into a warrior one first. Bring your hands to your heart. Think about pulling your belly button in and lengthening through your tailbone. So we want to try to minimize this natural arch that we have. So we're really lengthening through the spine, tailbone down, pull that belly in, hands to heart. All right. We're going to take a deep breath in here and let's move to an extended arms to the ceiling. There we are in a beautiful warrior one. One more breath here. Now we're going to move into a warrior two facing me. So your right arm windmills around and then here we are in a beautiful warrior two pose. So a couple of things I want you to think about. First one is this knee needs to be tracking right at your second toe. It tends to want to fold in, but don't let it, right? So you're having to work your inner thighs to keep that leg open. 
Next thing I want you to think about is where is your center of the body. So I want the head and the neck and the spine to all be in right in alignment. Okay, squeeze the muscles against the bones in your arms. So activate that upper body and let's go ahead and look over those front fingertips. Pull those shoulders down, belly is tight. Lengthening the crown of the head towards the ceiling. Flip this front palm up and back. Let's reverse our warrior. Feel that stretch in the side waist. Let's come back to that warrior two. Squeeze the muscles against the bones in those arms. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. And let's release him. We're going to go to the other side. We'll be adding in a triangle, but I want to go through this series first and then we'll add that triangle. So we're on the other side. Remember, knee bends. Take that step back. That foot is at 45 degrees. Bring those hips forward. Bend that front knee. Bring your hands to heart. Pull your belly in. Lengthen through the tailbone. Standing down that back leg is pretty much, if you think about standing down the back leg, that's going to get the weight right in the center of the body. All right, take a deep breath in, and on an exhale, hands to the ceiling, beautiful warrior one. Lengthening through the spine, belly is tight, take a deep breath in, and on an exhale, we're going to windmill to that warrior two. Making sure that knee is tracking right at that second toe. Squeeze the muscles against the bones in those arms. Let's flip that front palm up and back. Feel the sideways stretching. One more breath. Back to your warrior two. And release. Very good. Let's come to the other side. We're going to add triangle pose. And we're going to revolve our triangle. I'm just going to use my chair if you really want to get deeper into your triangle and use your block, then go ahead and set your block up and get ready for that. You want it on the inside of this front foot. But if you're with me, I'm just going to use my chair. I don't know. I just That's what I want to do today. And I listen to my body, right? So we always listen to our bodies and what it's telling us it wants us to do. We're going to bend that front knee. We're going to stand down that back leg. That back foot is at that 45 degree angle. We're going to bring our hands to our heart. Take a deep breath in. Pull that belly in. Extend those arms up to the ceiling for a beautiful warrior one. Let's move to that warrior two. Let's flip that palm up and back. Now we're going to come back to warrior two. Okay, so listen. Straighten this front leg. You want to bend it so bad. But you want to keep that leg straight. All right? Now, upper body and lower body are two totally different things to right now. Upper body is going to come forward over the chair. Upper body is coming over that chair. Do you see that? Upper body is coming over that chair. It just won't go any further. Then you're just simply going to let that hand come down into the chair. If you're using your block, then that hand is going to come down onto that block. And if you don't have a block and you want more than just hand and chair, see what I'm doing? My hand is way down by my ankle. And that's fine too. But here's the key. If you're here, but your heart is coming forward, then I would rather you put your hand back in that, in the seat of the chair and lift. And in fact, everybody, the hand is in the air, put it on your waist and lift your heart. See the difference there? We're not here, we're here. And now let's extend that arm. So your wrist and your shoulder and your shoulder and your wrist are all in alignment. Oh, that feels good. Okay, the hand that's in the air, we're going to revolve our triangle. We're going to bring it down either to the chair, to the block, to the leg, whatever you're doing, and then we're going to revolve our triangle the other way. So again, the arm that's extended out, that's not, can I get that arm any higher? Your revolving is happening right at the midsection, right at the uh, rib cage, right? Let's bring that hand back down, open back up. That front leg is still straight. I know, you want to bend it so bad, don't you? All right, let's do it. Let's bend it back to that warrior two. Let's flip our palm up and back one final time. Back to warrior two. Squeeze the muscles against the bones in those arms and release. Hi, let's do the other side. 
So as we set up into our warrior one, remember that back foot is at that 45 degree angle, those uh, hips are forward. Remember anytime we're revolving, the action happens through the rib cage, not the shoulders. I don't ever want you to overextend your shoulders. It's just not a good thing, right? It doesn't matter how high or far back that arm is, have it in alignment. That's way more important. All right, bring those hips forward, pull that belly in, lengthen through that tailbone, bring your hands to heart, take a deep breath in, exhale, hands to ceiling. Inhale, exhale, move to warrior two. Inhale. Exhale, flip that palm up and back. Oh yeah, back to that warrior two. All right, here we go. Straighten that front leg. Upper body comes over the chair, comes over the chair. It comes over the chair and it cannot go any further. Then you put your hand down wherever you're, you're you know, wherever you want that hand to be. Remember, it can be in chair, it can be down, it can be on your block. You've got options. Let's take the hand that's in the air, place it on our waist, and lift that heart up, and then extend. You see that? So my extension, my wrist, shoulder, shoulder, wrist, is in alignment. Okay. Oh my goodness, are you feeling this? I am. <laughs> ah, okay, hand in the air. Now we're gonna revolve our triangle. So we're gonna place that hand in the chair, or wherever it is that, you know, your leg or your block, and then we're gonna revolve that triangle the other way. Remember, what's happening, the action at the rib cage. Do not overextend that upper shoulder. One more breath, bring that hand back down to the chair. Open back up. Oh, that feels so good. Let's bend that front knee back to that warrior two. Flip that palm up and back. Back to warrior two, squeeze the muscles against the bones in your arms and release. Very, very good. Okay, we're going to move into a standing crescent lunge and pyramid pose. So the leg that's next to the chair is the one that's going to be forward. Take a step back. Now, unlike what we just did with our warrior poses, all ten toes are going to point forward this time. All right? So especially those back like it, it's going to want to turn. See if you can keep the, that foot straight, okay? Now, we're going to bend that front knee. Bring your hands to your heart. So we're stretching into the front side of this back leg. You're also going to feel the calf, especially if you keep all ten toes pointing forward. Bring your hands to heart or hold on to the chair. If you want to hold the chair, that's fine. Do you feel that? Oh my goodness, one more breath. All right, now we're gonna move into a pyramid pose. So we're gonna straighten our front leg, hold the chair is fine, and let that heart fall forward. There's our standing pyramid pose. Back is flat, front leg is straight, hamstring is stretching. All right, one more breath. Go ahead and bend that front knee, lift your heart up. Can you sink any deeper into that Crescent lunge, I don't know if you saw, but I just pushed my back foot back just a little bit more. Oh yeah, one more breath. All right, hold that chair, straighten that front foot, pyramid pose. I said straighten the front foot, <laughs> I meant the front leg. I suspect your foot is straight, right? All right, last one, here we go. We're gonna bend that front knee. Bring your hands to heart. Now, if you want to, go post arms. Squeeze your shoulder blades behind you and look up just slightly. I don't know about you, but I feel that even more. One more breath. Bring your hands back to heart. Straighten that front leg and pyramid pose. All right, let's go ahead and come up. And we're just going to stay on this side of the chair and we're going to do the other leg, okay? So now I'm going to take a step back with that other leg. Personally, if you want to stay up on those back toes, then you're going to get maybe get a little deeper into your crescent lunge, but it's your choice. If you want to put the heel down and get the calf stretch, that's a good one too, right? So kind of your choice, I would say, on that one. I'm going to leave my heel up and I'm going to get a little bit more into the front side of this leg. I can feel it a little bit more. Okay, are we ready? All right. 
Let's see if we can release the chair and bring our hands to heart. Pull that belly in. Sink into that crescent lunge. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Do you feel it? I do. Ah. One more breath. Okay. Hang on to that chair. Straighten that front leg. Let that heart fall forward. There we are in pyramid pose. Such a pretty, pretty pose. Let the back stay flat. Maybe your hand walks down that leg a little bit. I would hold on to the chair though, right? This isn't balanced. Don't worry about it. Hanging on to that chair is A-OK -okay with me. All right, let's bend that front knee. Can you sink any deeper into that crescent lunge? Just try it. Can you get any more stretch out of the front side of that back leg? Bring your hands to heart. Ah. I didn't have my abdominals engaged, right? One more breath here. Grab the chair. Straighten the front leg. Pyramid pose. You know we have one more. Make it count. Mm. All right, back up we go. Last one. This is it. Now, if you want a little bit of add-on, we're going to come to go post arms and squeeze our shoulder blades behind us. Ah, and look up just slightly. Belly tight, right? Oh my, one more breath. Come back down, last pyramid pose. Straighten the front leg. Just one more breath. Come up. All right, let's have a seat. Huh. How's that feel? <laughs> and grab a sip of water. Let's move forward in our chair and we're going to do some windshield wiper knees. If you want to hold on to the chair, that's great. So all we're going to do is we're going to let our knees fall. i, I got to come just a little bit further forward. Let our knees fall to the right. And then we're going to come center and let our knees fall the other way. So let's go ahead and come up center. The key to this one is the hips stay forward, okay? So do that again. Just windshield wiper knees and center and back and center. Okay, so now the add-on for this one, we're going to let our knees fall to the right and then I'm going to take my foot and I'm going to place it on that knee, all right? So keeping the hips forward is where you're going to get the most stretch into those hips. Does that, does that feel okay? This one, if you are so inclined and want to do this laying down on the, on the flat on your back and do this version, boy, does it feel good on the back. It really does. One more breath. Let's come up, release that, and let's go to the other side. So we're going to let those knees fall to the left first. Bring your foot up and then just lift up. So kind of the weight of this leg is giving you a little more stretch here. We just have one more breath. All right, let's go ahead and come up and release. All right, so the first thing, uh, the next thing we're going to do is our extended chair pose with a block. We're going to start with the block between the knees. Now, if you don't have a block, just it's fine, right? Just think about squeezing in, all right? So we're going to start with our hands at heart. I don't know if you notice, but I'm kind of moving forward in my chair. So we're going to bring our hands to heart, all right? We're going to take a deep breath in. And on an exhale, I'm going to act like I'm getting up off the chair, and I'm going to squeeze that block, all right? You might be thinking, what does this have to do with the back? You'll see here in a minute. You know me, we add on, right? Okay, let's release that. Let's do that one more time, all right? Hands at heart. We're going to squeeze that block. Act like you're getting out of the chair, but no. One more breath and release. Okay, this time we're going to lift our hips up off of the chair. So make sure that your feet are at a position when you push down, you've got purchase and you can lift up, okay? So we're going to take a deep breath in. On an exhale, we're going to lift up, squeeze the block. Now, if it feels okay for you, you're going to pull your belly in and you're going to extend your arms long. Squeeze the block, extend the arms long, and you should feel a nice stretch into the back. 
One more breath here. Bring your hands back to heart. Go ahead and have a seat and release. Can we do that one more time? All right, one more time and that's it. All right, so here we go. We'll bring your hands to heart to start with. Squeeze that block, take a deep breath in. Exhale, press into your chair pose. All right, inhale here. Exhale, extend your chair pose. Extending those arms, squeezing that block, looking down at the floor, no wrinkles in the neck. You should feel a good stretch into the back. Lengthening through that spine. One more breath. Bring your hands back to heart. Go ahead and have a seat. Excellent. Okay, let's set our block down. Okay, we're going to do a seated twist here. So, I normally we would just do this twist. I want us to try the version where we cross our leg over. So I'm going to take my left leg and I'm going to cross it over the right, okay? Then I'm going to take my right hand and I'm going to place it on the outside. So whichever leg is on top, the opposite hand is the one that you want to have here. The other hand is going to come back to the chair, lengthen through the spine, pull that shoulder back, and then turn and look over that shoulder. So it's a little different with the leg crossed. I don't know if you feel it, but I do. Let's come center, and then we're gonna do twist the other way. So this hand is gonna come on the inside of that leg. This hand is gonna come back to the chair, lengthen, pull the shoulder back, and twist. Don't forget, you always wanna lengthen through the spine before you move the spine in any direction. All right, and Release. Let's go to the other side. Okay. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the opposite hand and place it on the outside of that leg. Other hand is going to come back to the chair. We're going to lengthen through the spine, pull the belly in, turn, and look over the back of our chair. Let's release that and do the other side. and release. Very, very good. Okay, so we're going to grab our block. If you don't have a block, you're just, just fine. Don't worry about it. But we're going to put our block in the number one position between our feet. Okay? So let's extend through the spine. Go ahead and hold on to those thighs first and let your heart fall forward. We're going to place our hands on the block let your head fall. So I'm looking underneath my chair. Now, if it feels okay for you, you're going to take your hands off of the block. You're going to grab your elbows and let the upper body hang out. So gravity is helping, right? Your hands are coming down towards the mat. Your head is get helping with that gravity. We have one more breath. Now go ahead and place your hands back on the block. Begin to work your way back up. Place your hands on your thighs. I'm just giving you a little bit of support for that low back and roll it all the way up. How did that feel? I love Ragdoll. I just think that one feels so good. Let's set our block aside. And we're gonna come into a pyramid pose. So we're gonna extend <clears throat> that right leg out, toes are up to the ceiling, lengthen through the spine, and let that heart fall forward. I'm holding onto my thighs here. Now I'm gonna roll it up. And I'm going to do that again. This time, if it feels okay, as you extend through the spine, walk your hands down your leg. See how that feels, right? If that doesn't feel good, then keep your hands on your thighs for a nice supported pyramid pose. This one is going to give you maybe a little bit more stretch if that works for your body. One more breath. You're going to walk your hands back up that leg, bend the knee, and let's go to the other side. 
So I'm going to extend my leg long, toes to the ceiling, lengthen through the spine, hang on to those thighs for the first one, right? Let that heart fall forward. How does that feel? Checking in. Let's go ahead and tuck our chin and roll up. Okay, and then this version, if you like that, extend the spine along. If that one felt good, let's walk our hands down the leg. Just a little different, right? Letting that heart fall just a little bit further. Keeping the back flat and keeping the legs straight. One more breath, and we're going to roll it up. And release. All right. So we're going to move into our seated pigeon. I'm going to take my ankle and let it rest right up in front of that knee. I'm going to extend my spine long and let my heart fall forward. If you'll notice, my back is flat, right? So the flatter you keep your back, the more you're going to feel this one. All right, let's roll it up. And let's just move that, I call it fluttering the butterfly wing. It just kind of moves that joint a little bit. And let's do that one more time. Lengthen through the spine. Let that heart fall forward. You feeling that glute? I am right here. Yeah. All right, let's roll it up. Wah! Let's go to the other side. Lengthening through the spine, letting that heart fall forward. Oh gosh, this is, just feels so good to me. Taking just a moment here, just a few breaths. Okay, let's roll it up and just flutter that butterfly wing. And let's do it one more time. Extend and hinge. Go ahead and roll it up. All right. Let's put our feet on the floor. Go ahead and sit back in your chair. You can lean back now if you wish. Hands are resting lightly on the thighs. Flip those palms up to the ceiling. Take a deep breath in and a full breath out. Close your eyes and breathe. Live, love, and enjoy. Live, love, and enjoy. Walk, run, breathe, and relax. Don't make every activity into an occasion for proving your point. Don't make every moment into a reason to worry and fret. Just be you, and just be fine with that. Let go of any concerns about how you will look or what they will think of you. Let other people's foolishness be their problem. Stop complaining that someone else's crazy behavior is ruining your life. It's not your job to save the world, and it's not your job and not the world's job to save you. It's not your place to set everyone straight, and it's not your obligation to cater to the insecurities of others. Take a deep breath, smile, and have fun. Let yourself and everyone else enjoy the beautiful day the beautiful life that is here right now. Take a deep breath in and a full breath out. Let your right ear fall towards your right shoulder. Read up, reach up with the right hand. Give the head a gentle tug as you press that left hand down towards the floor. Release it. Drop your chin towards your chest. Reach up with the hands. Give the head a gentle tug. Release it. Left ear to left shoulder. Reach up with left hand. Give the head a gentle tug as you press that right hand down towards the floor. Release it. Look up just slightly. Open your mouth if you want to stretch your jaw. Bring your hands to your heart. Honoring one another, we say, Namaste. Thank you so much for joining, and I hope to see you next time. 
Remember, click that subscribe button and give me a comment.